Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, please subscribe. I'd really love that. If you're returning, how you doing? What we're going to be talking about right now is something that was sent to me by a community member. And this is extremely interesting. And I need you to just listen to everything that has to be said. Okay. So <clears throat> the United States has joined 12 other nations in signing a WEF agreement that seeks to engineer global famine by destroying the agricultural uh, industry. And this is not a huge secret, okay? Um, according to the agreement, which was drawn up by the WEF and the UN, food production is causing G-warming and must be eliminated. <laughs> I know what you're thinking because I'm thinking the same thing. So to save the planet from sea change, globalists insist that farms must be shut down around the world. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, how do these globalists and elites think that they're going to be getting their salads and their uh, zucchini and their what? You know, I'm just what the heck? Oh, God, here we go. So under the guise of reducing methane emissions, or cow farts, as I like to call them, 13 nations have signed the pledge to engineer global famine by gutting agricultural production and shutting down farms. Announced earlier this year by the WEF's Global Methane Hub, a cabal of, en of crisis engineers who exploit public panic, and that's the one thing that I hate, they always trying to create public panic. And the one thing that I am totally against is fear mongering. And this is the one thing that they, they thrive on is the fear mongering part. And I, I'll never understand it for as long as I live. So anyway, I'll go on. So it says who exploit public panic to destroy the world food supply and the 13 nations are Argentina, Australia, Brazil, Burkina Faso, Chile, Czech Republic, uh, Ecuador, Germany, Panama, Peru, Spain, United States, and Uruguay. Now imagine no meat production from Australia, Brazil, and the United States. This is the goal of the globalists. But how much do you want to bet? In their awesome little 10,000 square feet bunkers, underground bunkers, they've got, uh, you know, their hydroponics so they can have their, their, their veg and their, and their fruits growing. Um, I highly doubt they're going to be eating lab grown meats or anything like that. Right on. But that's what they want to give our military. So, and they admit that it's all a part of the sea fraud which has been thoroughly exposed as a quack science hoax, by the way. As Louis Planas, P-L-A-N-A-S, which is Spain, uh, Spain's Minister of Agricultural Fisheries and Food, says, I'm glad to see the shared commitment by the international community to mitigate methane emissions from agriculture as a means to achieve the goals we signed for in the Paris Agreement to Climate. Um, sorry, my dog, he, he budged my table. Uh, food systems are responsible for 60% of methane emissions. And she also go, oh, oh, that was said by a woman by the name of Marcelo Mena, M-E-N-A. Um, and she is saying that farming is destroying the planet, hence their demand to shut down farms. Without farms, you have no food. And that's the one thing I don't understand, okay? Like, during the Great Depression, okay? I'm going to go, you know, off of this article for just a second. During the Great Depression, okay, food was so scarce that the, 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 the people who lived during the Great Depression, they had their own little, like, freedom gardens and things like that and and, and so, you know so they could literally thrive so they could feed themselves and 
without those little freedom gardens, okay, a lot of people would not have been able to make it. But yet, these people are saying, oh, <laughs> well, gardening is, you know, it's bad for the environment. No, it's not. It actually gives back to the environment, but I'll go on. So without food, you get exactly what heals up <laughs> called for over the weekend, which is reduced population. So the depopulation agenda is no longer even a secret. They are bragging about it now. And here's their logic. Food equals G warming. So they are attacking food and shutting it down. John Kerry said in a statement that mitigating methane is the fastest way to reduce warming in the short term. Food and agriculture can contribute to a low methane future by improving farmer productivity and resilience. We welcome agricultural ministers participating in the implementation of Global Methane Pledge. Cows and chickens to be replaced by crickets and insect larvae. No. So enjoy the crunchy fake meat patties and cricket McNuggets. Oh my God. Soon you will be eating bugs because meat will be wildly unaffordable. See, it's already becoming unaffordable. It really truly is. How many here, okay, I know I can't see you raise your hands or anything like that, but, you know, how many here seriously, um, you know, because even produce, whoops, even produce is becoming unaffordable, right on? So how many here have like for like their you know their their weekly menus that they cook every single you know night or whatever for the week have like meatless monday okay or do you do it like more than once a week okay because meat is literally becoming unattainable and so is even produce okay how many here just do like pasta and a sauce or pasta, pasta and a red sauce, pasta and Alfredo sauce or pasta and a pesto? And then you make like a biscuit on the side. Okay. And that's a filling meal. How many here do just like uh, la, 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 rice and beans? And that's a filling meal. Uh, right on. Okay. So you were just to let you know that, you know, regardless of how much money you make, Okay. You're not alone. Okay. I don't make a lot of money. I really don't. Okay. You want to know what YouTube pays me? <laughs> About three to $400 a month. Okay. I don't make a lot of money and that's not tax free either. Okay. So after taxes, I get like 200 a month. Yeah. Um, so, you know, yeah, we go meatless at least three days a week four days a week sometimes even okay um because you know we have to stretch but the, there's no shame in that game okay uh but is it going to get any worse uh yeah it's going to get a lot worse so but I, you know there's no shame in it there's no shame if you wanted to go vegetarian who cares it's still nutritious okay you're still getting a lot of protein from the beans and the peanut butter and stuff like that okay eat a lot of fruit i love I just made a fruit salad the other night. Oh my God. I could not stop eating that fruit salad, girl, when I tell you. Okay. So, but it's only going to be available to the wealthy elites, to the globalists, to the Mark Zuckerbergs of the world. Okay. So, and this is all due to the government shutting down the farms and the ranches. So, as per journalist Leo Homan and the, the way that he explains things, we can presume from this language that among the practices being considered are replacing major portions of beef and dairy cattle, pork and chicken that populations rely on for protein with insect larvae, mealworms, crickets, etc. Okay, how gross, right on? You can't live off of that. Your body, your digestive system cannot digest that garbage. Not just that. If you have, is it shellfish that you're allergic to? I think. Don't quote me on that. You can't eat it anyways. I think. 
Okay. So the UN, the WEF and other NGOs have been promoting this meatless diet and the consumption of insect protein for years. And these billionaires have invested in massive insect factories being built in the state of Illinois, in Canada, in the Netherlands, where mealworms and crickets and other bugs will be processed as additives to be inserted into the food supply. Oh, yum, yum. Often without clear labels that will inform you of what you are eating and what you are buying. Okay. So this Leo Holman also refers to the Deagle forecast, which projects an almost 70% of reduction in the U S population by 2025. And this is what he said. There is no more efficient way to depopulate than through war, famine, and plague. Isn't it interesting that all three of these time tested methods um, are in play right now. Well, yeah, of course it is. So in a related story, Michael Snyder, S N Y D E R from the economic collapse blog writes this global food supplies just keep getting tighter and the global hunger has risen to extremely alarming levels. According to the United nations, nearly 30% of the global population does not have constant access to food right now. And that's so true. Okay. It's so true. Um, a lot of people, they rely on food pantries. They rely on food stamps. They rely on, okay. So much stuff just so they can put food in their bellies and the, and the bellies of their children. Okay. They don't have uh, 50 bucks in their bank to go to Dollar Tree to go shopping. Okay. Just remember this, every single one of us. Okay. It was one paycheck away from being homeless. Let that sink into your brain for just one moment. Okay. Forget about eating for two seconds. We are one paycheck away from being homeless. Okay. So, and there are approximately 900 million people that are facing f severe food insecurity. So these are some really, really scary times that we're living in right now. And like I've said before, I can't remember when I said it, but I said it, um, we are in what's called or considered, uh, a silent depression. We're not in a great depression. We're not even in a second great depression. We are in what's called a silent depression. So I don't care what anybody says, guys, get those freedom gardens going. Okay. Grow your tomatoes, grow your zucchinis, grow your yellow squash. Okay. Grow your herbs. Okay. I don't care if you put your herbs on your windowsill in the kitchen. Okay. Grow something right on Grow something. You'll thank me later. Okay. All right, guys, listen, I'm out of here. All right. I will see you in the next one. You stay safe. You stay positive. You keep prepping. And as always, fearless. less.